How's it going, guys? Welcome to Audio Addiction. We have bad plans with us, and he can say his name and what hey, he does. Yeah, this is uh, Jesse. I am bad plans, I guess. It's more of a moniker than a band that confuses some people. Um, so, yeah, my role is uh, CEO of bad plans. <laughs> there we go. That's what I'm talking about. You got to have, you got to have put the stamp of approval of yourself on it. Um, yeah. but the first thing would be, and obviously since you're the CEO mastermind, whatever, whatever verbiage you want to use behind bad plans. So, um, how did you start out in music? I assume maybe you were in bands prior to doing this project. So, um, you know, how did you start out and then how did you obviously come to become bad plans? Yeah. Oh man. We could do a whole interview on that. Probably, man. I started, uh, I started music when I was super young. Like I was, uh, I met a bunch of dudes when I was in elementary school, uh, starting in and like kind of starting into middle school mm -hmm. and started this band. Um, we were literally not old enough to drive. I, like we did, we were doing like out of state shows when we were like 12 and 13. So oh literally our parents, our parents would like help us pack gear into like their SUVs and we would drive like two or three vehicles to these gigs. And yeah, so I started, I started like super young um, and kind of got a jump started. I was, I was in and out of a lot of bands um, just through high school. I would be in like probably a couple bands at the same time usually. And yeah. And then I ended up moving to uh, Nashville. So I'm originally from Indiana. I'm really originally from the Midwest. Okay. Um, I ended up moving to Nashville to uh, kind of make music more of a full-time thing. And um, I played with a lot of artists as, as like a session player down here. Um, and I decided um, that wasn't enough. And now I want to do my own thing. In addition to still playing for some artists, um, I produce as well and mix. So I do that on the side and... So yeah, bad, bad plans is like my first venture completely on my own. That's cool, you know, because I always I I don't know maybe it's just the music nerd in me that enjoys like the the anthology of bands and like how they kind of formulate, come together, and like are able to do things, whether it be more of a solo project or like a band aspect of it. Um, did you ever feel like obviously since you moved to Nashville and you're, you also do like studio session stuff? Did you ever feel like Oh, I want to do like the band thing again. Like, I'd like to, you know, meet maybe meet people in Nashville and like do that sort of a thing. Or do you feel like just because of for time's sake, you're like, oh well, you know, I'm a session musician. You know, I do all this other stuff. I want to have a life and have free time. Uh, so, like, did you feel like Bad Plans was like something that you obviously wanted to do and you're fulfilling now, but wanted to kind of like. I don't know how to word it per se, but like, was it something that you've wanted to do as just like a solo artist, not maybe as like a band thing? Um, I've kind of left that open right okay. now. Um, so the floor is kind of open if I meet some people that, um, you know, kind of think the same way that I do or, or, uh, want to put like their whole life into a project. Cause that's kind of what it takes, um, to get a band off the ground. Then I would definitely consider bringing other people on. That's, that's, a large part of why it has a different name than me um also because starting a new band right now is kind of a horrible plan right yeah. <laughs> well i mean yeah so based cool. based off of current situations yes i i would i would assume it's not the best time to start a band yes no or maybe uh, it is. i don't know we're figuring it out but yeah, yeah i've I've left the floor open to to bringing in other members, but right now I'm pretty happy with my setup. So, uh, fair enough. I mean, I've I always asked that question because I think it always interests me just on the basis of like because a lot of people think that audio addiction is like more than one person based on and I talked about it in a podcast episode I did recently um and everybody thinks it's like, "Oh, there's four people on the channel." So, it, like it has to be four people. Like, you know what I mean? And I'm just lazy and I never changed I never went back and changed the trailer channel thing on YouTube and stuff like that. So anybody that messages me is automatically assumes it's one of four persons people will answer this email and they are very misguided when that when it comes to that cuz it's just me. So I'm the only one who answers like any social media stuff like that. Um and so things kind of change in that aspect. So whenever I have like people on that are like I guess more solo artist focus. It's always interesting for me to kind of 
view it from that lens of like, okay, well, like the option of having more people on is definitely there, but you know, I understand the aspect of like wanting to do it on your own and have that like sort of like, I guess like self empowerment of like you doing it and being like, yeah, I made it. Like I made the, I made this music and stuff like that, or I made this, you know, what X, Y, Z thing. And so it's always impressive to me to have that kind of like drive as being, I guess more closely assimilated to like a solo artist or something like that. Absolutely, man. And what you're doing is awesome here too. But yeah, it's sometimes, sometimes uh, being just one person is, is really difficult, mm -hmm. but um, it's awesome to be able to stay lean and make, make quick decisions. You know, when you're in a band, every, you know, every micro decision has to bounce off of at least two of the members and, you know, and most bands are a democracy of some kind. Yeah. So, so uh, it's just a little slower. Yeah, making it deliberating over certain things, sure. Um, and I also feel like your job is made that much easier because, you know, you do have a studio where you mm -hmm. live. So I think that also, like, just makes the job easier where you're just, like, you get up, you're like, oh, I can go write some Bad Plans music in my house. Like, I don't have to go leave. And obviously now it makes more sense than ever. But, um, you know, even prior to that, you're like, I don't have to go drive to a studio and, like, pay for time there to figure out stuff or I don't have to, like, you know, maybe drive to a bandmate's house and, like, try to figure out stuff. Um, yeah, I do. I do all my own demos. This last single, uh, I actually went to a producer in Baltimore named Eric Taft. So when we get things to where we feel like they're mostly finished, um, I, I will go to an actual producer just because I feel like um, what, because it is just me, one of the pitfalls is I get stuck in like an echo chamber of listening to my songs over and over. And so I got to have that outside of input right now. I feel like that's really important. But in the writing process, yes, it's great to get up at 3 a.m. when I'm having an existential crisis <laughs> and uh bust out some some demos you know the best time is is super late at night like i don't know it might just be the it might just be like the musician and most of us that all of the best material comes out at after midnight or later you know at the cost of getting sleep or anything like that i always find that I feel the most motivation after midnight, which sucks because that's usually my like weekday night is like when I'm doing reviews and stuff, like I'll be up way past midnight and then I'll have work at like eight o'clock in the morning. So, you know, I, my sleep schedule is completely screwed. Um, but I, I find that even with, you know, fellow musicians and stuff like that, I find that like best material comes out at that early hour in the morning when you know, you can't sleep or something like that. <laughs> totally. Um, but I think it's cool that you mentioned like the producer aspect of it. Cause I did check out the latest single and I thought it was very good. Like I, I thought the production on it was really just like, like I, I had like this kind of like fullness that, you know, a lot of that sort of style of music has, but something about it was different. Your voice on it is very like, to me, it had this unique tonality to it, and I thought it was very interesting to kind of listen. And usually, nine times out of ten, when I have artists on to do this thing, I try to do my homework and like really listen to the music and like listen to what's out there now. Um, and I'm just curious to kind of the follow up to what we've been talking now is like, who are you influenced by? Um, like, who got you? started into music and then who kind of influences you now more currently um in terms of like bad plans and stuff like that because i have ideas in my head of who i think it is but i'm sure. curious if i can get if i can be backed up by that you're probably really close if not okay. dead. um what started me in music um and this is kind of funny looking back now is i saw i've always so i've always been into big rock i gotta preface with that okay. uh, i grew up you know my dad was into eighties rock. He was in bands. Um, and so I always grew up into like really just big grandiose rock. So I saw skillet when I was like okay. 10. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And they, had, they had the flames and, uh, they had this rocker chick guitar player with the colored hair. And, and I was like, man, I want to do that for the rest of my life. Like, I just thought it was so awesome, you know? 10 years old i'm in an arena for the first time <laughs> i just thought i just thought that was incredible so uh shout out to skillet for for getting me started 
Um, but uh, more recently, um, and it and as it pertains to like my own music, I've been really into like uh, Lincoln Park and Nine Inch Nails and uh, yeah. a lot of like uh, electronic, almost like industrial infused kind of kind of big rock. Um, you know, more modern representations of that. I Prevail is really cool. Um, just all kinds of stuff. I, I I'm pretty. I was pretty close about that. I I did I did think Lincoln Park. I didn't think Skillet. That was a surprise. That was a surpriser to me. I did, I didn't. I kind of ha I kind of had that inkling. Like I was like, there's another band. I can't think of it, but I know it's like some sort of like arena rock, like hard rock style band. So I'm yep. glad you mentioned Skillet. They get not, they don't get enough love. I don't think so. At least yeah. my knowledge. I haven't. I don't listen to them as frequently, but um, you know, I have to pay pay respect that they're a huge part of why I started music. If I wouldn't have gone to that show, I wouldn't I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. Um, also, Beartooth is awesome. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I from, feel like you kind of. I feel like you kind of borrow from like hard rock, arena rock. Another band that I was thinking of, which you didn't mention, which I'm sure you're influenced by too, is like Bring Me the Horizon. I feel yeah. like. That was another band that, like, immediately, like, when I was listening to it, I was like, yeah, okay, kind of has that sound, it kind of has that Linkin Park, a little bit of nine, definitely some Nine Inch Nails in terms of, like, industrial aspect, and uh, I think a little bit of Nothing More, too, I feel like that band, too, kind of, it kind of drives your sound a little bit as well, so, you know, fan, people watching this, um, if you like any, if you like any of those bands, I think you'll definitely dig what Jesse's got going on here with bad plans. Um, but the next question, Jesse, kind of to follow that up, you know, who are you listening to more currently? Uh, you know, I know obviously you do a lot of production work, uh, you know, and just doing that at your house, but uh, what's some stuff that you listen to on your leisure? Um, yeah, definitely all the bands above, you know, I love, you know, I still love modern rock, um, but when I want to get outside of that, um, I listen to definitely a lot of pop, you know. Okay. I think pop kind of runs adjacent with rock. Um, there's a hip hop artist called Paris Shadows I've been really into lately. His stuff's really cool. A lot of alternative, um, you know, Missio, uh, Young Blood's really cool. Nice. More yeah. Um, the new Haley Williams record is awesome. Um, just like, a bunch of 80s inspired pop. I've always loved The Weeknd. Um, been into The Weeknd's new stuff a lot. I'll have to listen to New Weeknd. I've I've been meaning I've been meaning to listen to it. It's on my on my running list of artists to check out. Um, obviously, I've no I've listened to The Weeknd for like a long time, but I haven't listened to a new record yet. I've I've heard some. I think I've only heard I've only heard Blinding Light just because that's the single. Sure thing, um, but I have to check out the rest of it. I know he's, I know he's just a great vocalist in general. So it, it it's very cool to hear a lot of artists now kind of pulling influence from like '80s pop. You know, I feel like a lot of times it's like the cycle always repeats. You know, history repeats itself, and I find that yeah. a lot of bands out now currently, as my voice cracks, um, <laughs> uh, all but like I feel like a lot of pop artists are pulling from like '80s pop, which happened like 20 something years ago so i think it's very cool and i i like the resurgence of that maybe yeah, it's just because i'm old as shit and i enjoy that stuff now but i yeah. think it's cool um but the next question jesse a fun one uh if you could pick a song to cover what would it be Ooh, i've, I've been thinking about this a lot lately um I still don't know if I have the answer. I think it would be cool to do something from the weekend, actually. Um, but I haven't worked up anything I'm in love with yet. Um, I think it'd be kind of fun to do like a heavy version of Love It If We Made It by 1975. Ooh, but no. Okay. Me to that. There we go. Well, I mean, it's on the internet, so I don't have to, I mean, I can hold you to it, but also the internet and people that are watching it will probably hold you to it. So, but um, I think it could be really heavy and really cool oh 100 percent. i love the 1975 so i i would fully back this answer so uh for the audio addiction fam uh please uh 
go bug Jesse about not too much, just bug him enough, you know, to do this cover. Um, and if you have any other recommendations, drop them in the comments below. I'm sure, uh, sure he'll go give it a check out. Um, yeah. But the next question is a lot of people uh, new to your music. Um, you know, what would be one song you would recommend to them out of bad plans? I think you only have, to my knowledge, I think you have two just songs two. up now. Uh, so which out of the two would you recommend? I mean, obviously, I, I feel like I know the answer, but I'm, I'm curious what you'll say. Or maybe a future song. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah, all wrong. Troubled Young Soul right now. I've got I've got some in the works, but uh, Troubled Young Soul. Yeah, I feel like I, I, that was my that was my initial thought about that. I was like, I was like, he's gonna say troubled young soul. So, uh, I guess the follow up to that is like, what we, what's the meaning behind that? I feel like the lyrically it's very deep, and I watched the I watched the video, and I was like, literally, my bed's like two feet away from here. So I was like, I like saw an email, you emailed me, and I saw it on my phone, and I was like, oh shit! I was like, I have to get up to. <laughs> So like I have to get up to do this interview. So I literally lit, put the song on YouTube, listened to it, and like ran into the bathroom, like threw water on my face. Still was listening to it. I probably listened to it like two or three times before like we actually hopped on to do this. Um, and I was just like, I was like, I should ask him what the meaning behind the song is because I I feel like I have an idea, but I don't always get a chance to like ask people this. So I, I'm curious, you know what your thought process was behind that and is a kind of an overarching theme to you know new music and stuff like that are you going to kind of carry that same sort of you know lyrical process or are you going to try to do just a bunch of different stuff yeah definitely um this song um i had to be really careful with this song so it was uh it's basically about um social anxiety disorder um, and my backstory with that is, um, obviously a lot of artists, um, and just in the general public, people talk about mental health now. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, 10, 15 years ago, it was still like really taboo to talk about. Nobody, oh, nobody yeah. at all, um, or any, any conversations regarding mental health, uh, were usually alluding to the fact that you're nuts. And there wasn't like a lot of, of gray area in between. So growing up, I was always like super, you know, like I was always like a super weird kid. You know, kids are just trying to figure out life. So most kids yeah. are weird. I was very weird. I'll, I'll, I'll preface that too. <laughs> um, but I thought, you know, I always felt, I always felt really weird in social situations to the point where I would like freeze up and not be able to talk and, and, um, you know, I would feel like I would, I would almost have like these panic attacks at like the smallest interactions, you know, just like checking out at the grocery store or whatever, just weird, just stuff like that would cause me to like, like really ramp up into like a weird panic. So I thought I was super messed up, um, for the longest time, just because I didn't really know what it what I didn't really know what I was dealing with. You know, I thought you know, am I crazy? Um, you know, do I need to like figure this thing out? Mm -hmm. You know, is there some loose wiring going on up there? I don't really know. So anyway, I thought I was super messed up for the longest time. Um, until, you know, fast forward to now people started talking about mental health. I realized that there's like a lot of people that yeah. feel similar things. Um, so I wanted to write a song kind of specifically for the feelings that surround people with social anxiety disorder. Um, so that's what the song is, uh, is about. Um, it was super easy to write. It was one of those ones where like, I just kind of sat down and all the lyrics spilled out just because it's literally all the things I've felt like my whole life. Mm -hmm. So they were, you know, all the thoughts were already there. Um, it's just so putting I, them on paper. Yeah, I just the lyrics kind of wrote themselves, and then I had to go back and like refine later. But um, but uh, yeah, I really w I wanted to write kind of the song that younger me needed to hear. 
No, if, yeah, I I think that's I think that's very uh, that's very adamant of you, Jesse, because like I know, I think for a lot of people that's how they feel. You know, especially mu- I feel like musicians in general are that type of breed of people, and that's why we get into music, myself included. Um, and I'll I'll give a little backstory behind me, which not not I don't think. I think only people personally would know about me, and maybe not even. So th- you're getting the exclusive from uh, audio addiction, which I very rarely do. So, um, but I remember before I started this channel, like five, I would say, g- give or take five years ago, and maybe even prior to that, I was kind of in the same boat as you. I would have these like, like thoughts in my head, like whatever I would like go to a grocery store or like whatever it may be and i'd just be like not i guess not super afraid to talk to people but i'd be afraid of what people would say to me and like you know like public speaking and stuff and now you know we're here you know literally interviewing people that that is my been my job per se for like four years now so completely 180 um but i remember like i remember sometimes where i would just be like I would be like full on sweating, like, you know, like doing public speaking stuff in like college and stuff. And I would just be like in my head, I would be freaking out. Like I wouldn't even like, I don't even know if people like knew how like scared I was to like say anything. And I was just sweating. I was like, I couldn't really control myself and stuff. And like people on the outside would just see like, just like a very like, like if you saw like a ghost or something i'd just be like pale and like just be like generally uncomfortable and so i feel like when i listened to this song it kind of brought me back to those days of like you know when panic used to freak me out and do all this sort of stuff so i i wanted to say like when when i was originally because usually i don't really come with the questions it's kind of like spitball sort of thing but um when i had listened to this song i was just like I have to talk to him about this because I n- know I've been in that position before and I almost had felt you were writing it from the position of like now I'm older and I have more experience and I'm able to maybe pass it off to somebody else like listening to it that's younger that maybe be going through the similar situation so um, I wanted to give you props for that because I know that a lot of people now like you were saying speak about mental health but mm-hmm. you know I feel like now it's just a little bit more approachable i feel like people are a little bit more self-aware of that sort of stuff but i feel like since we're kind of in the same age bracket that you know like back then it was just like who cares if you're like you know if you don't feel comfortable talking in front of somebody like you have to be you have to be strong and you have to do this and i think people were just like uh, i feel like people kind of mowed over it to just be like oh we'll suck it up like you should be stronger than that and then you know like in in reality that might not really help you at all you know absolutely man yeah you're so right and that was and uh all those things you just said is a huge reason why uh why i wrote this song and i actually struggled uh so i've had this song done for a while mm-hmm. uh I sat on it for like a year because i wanted to make sure that um, I wanted to make sure a, that I wasn't just going to be another band that talks about mental health for likes and that it was actually going to be presented in a way that was going to legitimately help people. And B, I kind of had to like, make sure I was ready to put out. Yeah. I can only imagine it's like, that. it's like putting something out that like is super important. I mean, I feel like that's how I feel. Anytime I post an audio addiction video, I feel like it's gotta be just right. You know? Yeah. And that I got to make sure I put my best foot forward, you know, as being an interviewer that does internet stuff all the time. <laughs> I yeah, got to make sure I'm straight, even though I'm, I, even though, granted, I am probably the dumbest person sometimes doing these interviews. So I'll, I'll give, I'll give myself credit in that respect, but also I know how stupid I can be doing this sort of stuff. So, um, but yeah, no, I, I really do appreciate it. I think it, like I said, it didn't come across like a cash grab if that's what you're i know that's not what you're achieving but it didn't seem like it whatsoever thank you man but uh the next question jesse getting into a little bit lighter territory because we did we did get a little deep but it's okay i always like getting that way and talking to people like that but um favorite food to eat what's the go-to Ooh. 
I have said the most consistently I could eat Mexican food any day, any time, any like any quality of Mexican food, Taco Bell all the way to the finest. Taco it's, Bell, you want to sponsor Jesse and I? That's what that that's truly, I think why Jesse and I, Jesse and I have come together, is that Taco Bell. If you're watching this, and you, I know you sponsor artists, so um, yeah, please do. I would consider throwing in a Baja Blast tattoo. Ooh, he's putting a Baja Blast tattoo on the tape. That's 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 some high dedication. I have to say that I would get one. But your boy uses a green screen, so if I, you know, if I if I had it on my arm, then my arm would be green screen. Oh, yeah. That's not a good look, you know. Maybe, maybe your whole green screen. Maybe just yeah. Actually, you know, I'll just get a whole sleeve of just Baja. I'll just say Baja. <laughs> I can't do Gotta that. I I know. I'll do the Taco Bell. Ta I'll do the Taco Bell logo. I feel like that's on the table. Taco Bell. We have the Taco Bell tattoo. I'll get the bell. And uh, Jesse over here is going to get the Baja Blast logo. So Absolutely. just saying, it's up there. It's up there for grabs. It's up to you guys now, wherever you are. Um, next question, Jesse, another fun one. If you could pick somebody to collaborate with, whether it be a guest feature on your next record or a producer you'd like to work with in the future, who would it be? Ooh, might have to think about that one. Okay. Shooting for the stars, the weekend would be incredible. Ooh. Again with the weekend. I promise I'm not obsessed, but you know. We all are a little bit. Uh that would be incredible. Um one that could happen, I don't even know. I I would really love to do a, a collaboration um with a hip hop artist of some kind. Oh, okay. I cannot I cannot uh rhyme myself. My flow is weak. <laughs> uh, so I think it, I I love all things rap rock though. So to my detriment, um, yeah, I would I would love to bring on like a hip hop artist of some kind. There's actually a, there's a cool uh, like newer sort of uh, rap rock artist called Discrepancies. I would love to yes. work. With. Discrepancies, homies, yeah. uh, ATG, come on. Um, but I know about them, and it'd be rad to work with them. Well, I can ATG Antonio, my guy. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. I know you can do it. I I know I know Antonio would be down to do it. So, I know you watch my stuff, Antonio. So, let's Jesse, Jesse Antonio collaboration. You know that that would make my day. You know I don't even have to give I don't even have to give the like co like I'll give the cosign to it. But you know you don't have to give me royalties. It's co totally cool. You guys keep it. I know you guys are artists. So. You keep what you do, but you know, if you gave me a shout out, it's all I, oh. that's all I want. That's all I want. You have to. There we go. <laughs> Next question, Jesse. Um, play a bunch of different instruments. I see a guitar, I see a bass, obviously do vocals, but uh, what would be another instrument you'd like to master? Ooh. Um, to master? I played a lot of trumpet in high school and haven't touched it since. I think it'd be fun. Um, I don't know how I'd use that in my music, <laughs> but I, it was, it was a lot of fun when I played and I just never really kept it up, got distracted by all the other instruments. That's very true. I mean, but, I have the, I have my guitar right next to my folded up clothes that I didn't realize was in camera frame. So shouts to me, uh, for not realizing that now. Least, yeah. They're not great. They're not great folded. This is like, you know, whatever. I don't really care. You know, people are going to, I feel like I'm going to get some comments about that clothes set in between right there over there, oh, for sure. whatever. It's cool. Uh, next question, Jesse would be another fun one. My personal favorite. I don't know how big of a gamer you are, but I'm very curious how you're going to answer it. If you could be a video game character, who would you be? Um, hmm. Serious answer. Anybody in skyrim ever um not serious answer steve from minecraft that dude lives a wild life he does i mean he literally is his his life is created around him so that was very deep i wasn't i wasn't trying to be deep but that it did come across that way so well we're gonna go from there anyway the next question jesse another fun one if we were to compile a dream tour lineup who would be on it 
Ooh. Hmm. Man, you're hitting me with all kinds of tough questions. The hardest yeah. ones, my friend. Um. Man, a lot of them have kind of happened. Um. So that one's tough. We might have to come back to this one. Mm, okay. That is a that is a comeback to question. I know sometimes you get. I, I you know it's funny, and I'll say this about like most most bands I've had on. There's a handful of questions that I've asked people, and they're like can't think of it on the spot. I think it's the the the, the cursed, um, you know, doing the in video interview, and then you remember everything after the fact and i'll get like text messages i'll get like facebook dms i'll get instagram dms whatever it may be and they're like oh i've thought of this answer this is what it is so yeah. if you do right come now, with that off the top of my head it's like Katy perry and slipknot i mean but that, I, I don't mean that you don't mean it i don't, mean I don't that. know i think that'd be kind of interesting who would open that though hmm just go nuts i think we're we're already we've already got two ends of the spectrum here so i don't know man Corey Taylor would probably put like Knock Loose or somebody on there, or like Code Orange. Fair point. Yeah. And then what would Katy Perry put on? Because I feel like they gotta they gotta keep it balanced, you know. Ooh, I'm saying throwback to her to somebody from like Warp Tour. She would put like All Time Low on there. Uh, okay, interesting. That would be. I don't know how down have half, half of the crowd would be like into it. I think like a very slim majority would be all for it. And I think there'd be some people would be like, why is Katy Perry an all time low with like knock loose or code orange slash slipknot? But hey, whatever. It's it's the Jesse tour. Um, you can buy tickets for that. It's going to be going worldwide everywhere in uh twenty twenty two. Uh y'all can get stoked for it. Jesse's opening up for the entire tour, so get very stoked for that. I know I'm stoked for it. Uh I always do that stupid bit, but it's great. And I'm going to continue to do it. So all of you can hate on me. I don't care. Um, but the next question, Jesse, the follow-up to that one, uh, in your opinion, who puts on a great live performance who just kills it live? Mm. Ob objectively, one of the best I've seen recently was Korn. Ooh, who did you, you see him with? Uh, it was a festival. Oh, okay center festival um and front to back their set list was pretty flawless oh okay so they played like i assume they played like a pretty good mix of uh like all the new yeah it was just a great mix of old and new um they you could tell they were just feeling it that night it was it was it was a really special set so corn corn puts on an incredible live show considering how long they've been a band and in their catalog i have a lot of respect for them um, I would love to see Star Set though. I haven't seen um, their production. I've heard is incredible, um, but I have not had the pleasure of seeing them live yet. That was that was the I couldn't think of it, and that was the other band that I was thinking of. Star Set was the other band. There's oh, yeah. something. There was something about it. Like I, so you know, listen. I I do this YouTube thing. I I listen to a lot of music. And people cannot expect me to know every band, but whenever I like can think of one and I can't think of it on the spot, it's always cool to hear that name. So I, I, I feel like for people who are watching this and are new to Bad Plans, if you're a fan of Star Set, I feel like this is a, you know, parallel band to check out for sure. Yeah, that means a lot, man. Hundred percent. That was the. That was definitely like I was like thinking of it. I was like. It begins with an S, and then you said Skillet, and I was like, I, there's definitely a Skillet in there, but I, it's not Skillet, and I couldn't think of the band. And, that, and then when you said Star Set, I was like, yep, that's what it was. I like, couldn't, for some reason, couldn't think of it. But Jesse was on it already. Knew what I was thinking in the dome. It was good. Um, but the next question, Jesse, another fun one. Favorite TV show, favorite movie? Ooh. Uh, Breaking Bad, for sure. Um, no Contest. And uh, favorite movie? I think I say Inception most consistently. It it changes, but I always come back to that one. It's great. I I I will say I have not. I've watched it. I think a couple times now. The first time I watched it, I like fell asleep, 
I don't know why. I just I guess I watched it after work and I like was like, yeah, this is a great movie to watch. And then I literally passed out and I didn't watch it again. Then I rewatched it and it was a little bit better. But that's a great. I mean, Leonardo DiCaprio did a fantastic job in that movie. That whole cast is great. So I really incredible, enjoyed that one. Incredible uh, score. The soundtrack yes. is top notch. Just great film. But it's definitely one you can't fall asleep for. I mean, yeah. if you miss like two minutes of that movie, the plot is screwed for you. Oh, a hundred percent. I felt like I felt like I was like on some sort of drug because I watched it, and I know how long the movie is, so I watched it. I like took like a quick snooze, and we went back, and I went back to watch it, and I was just like, "Where nope. did they? How did they get from that point to the next point?" And like you said, if you lose, if you snooze for like a minute, you lose all of that context immediately. So. Don't fall asleep in Inception. I know it's been out for a long time, and you probably can look up other people's fan theories on it or whatever, but actually watch it for yourself because it's a great movie. And then don't fall asleep, so maybe, like, drink an energy drink or coffee or something. I don't know. But uh, the next question, Jesse, uh, is another fun one. Uh, if you're trapped on a desert island or in quarantine for a month and there was one record you could bring with you, what would it be? Oh, jeez. This is another really hard one. I'm going to say another thing I probably don't mean. Um, <laughs> the fair. Chevelle sci-fi crimes. I actually mean. I, feel I was going to say, you feel, I was going to say, if you don't mean that, that I would be very upset. Yeah, they are, they are my all time favorite band. And that's definitely my favorite record from them. That's a great, that, that's that, that I, I haven't heard that record name in a while. So I have to give you the props on that. That was a tried and true classic. Um, yep. Chevelle, I just feel like, is an underrated band to begin with. I feel like people that are fans of them, like, are, I would say are pretty diehard fans of them. Um, but there's not, yeah, yourself included. Uh, I just feel like they don't get a lot of talk about. I don't know. That's just me, maybe, personally. But I don't feel like they get enough love. So, shouts to Chevelle. Um, yeah, great, great band. band. I don't draw a lot of influence from them for bad plans but they're definitely uh my probably my all-time favorite band and uh, so consistent mm -hmm. their sound across all their records is really consistent but each one kind of sits in its own headspace i would a, i would 100 percent back that that they they've they're a very consistent band that always writes some really intriguing and interesting material so shouts to chevelle i've already said that seven times but we're gonna say it again for the eighth yep. time. Um, but the last thing, Jesse, you've, we've come to the end of the line. Uh, tell them about Bad Plans, uh, where they can find you at on the social media, because you know that's all important right now, um, and what you got coming up in the next couple months. This interview is going out in July, early July, so if you have you know, anything to talk about for early July. Ooh, yeah. You can find me on all the socials at backslash bad plans music, bad plans music .com. Twitter is at bad plans music. Instagram is at bad plans music. Um, we keep it consistent over here. Um, Troubled Young Soul is out everywhere digitally that you can find it. Um, and that'll be it. Maybe a music video. We'll see. We'll Check see. back. You have to you have to subscribe to his YouTube channel, which I found very easily. If you just type in "bad plans band," immediate. So Jesse's on point with the with that. I gotta give him credit for yep. keeping I'm, I'm not doing my job very well. Yes, exactly. And I feel like you kept it all consistent across social media and didn't have a problem finding you. This isn't a call out to any bands. I'm just saying Jesse made it one stop shop, babies, and I love that. You know, so I gotta give him credit for that. But go check out Trouble Young Soul, his uh, latest single. It's great. I thoroughly enjoyed it. it. Hit the heartstrings, you know, um, definitely. And I think it would. I think it will resonate with a lot of you, especially if you struggle with that. Um, great voice, uh, great tune. Really enjoyed it. Um, and so you can check all the links in the description where you can find out about Bad Plans, their music anything coming up maybe maybe music video hopefully quarantine will be over with you know what i'm saying so uh go check out jesse's stuff uh if you enjoyed this interview uh share like it subscribe it goes a long way make sure to go tweet at atg my guy 
uh, so we can get that collaboration rocking. You know, just saying, ATG Antonio, my guy. You know, listen, I'll give, I'll give, I'll give Jesse the plug. So listen, discrepancies has been on twice now. You're my boy. Uh, Jesse's great. He's a great songwriter, great producer, and uh, I think you guys. I don't know. There's just just that collab. I'm feeling. I'm feeling the collaboration. So, please, ATG. I, I'll I'll just clip this one part and send it to ATG. I'm sure he'll be be down to do it. Check for back for updates. I'm sure he will be down to do it since I don't know he's doing a quarantine, so he could do it. But um, but the the thing before we close out, Jesse, I'm more curious. How did you find out about the channel? Because sometimes when I get the emails and the DMs and stuff. I'm always very curious because I feel like as as a marketeer, uh, I am always curious how far my natural reach goes. So, uh, how did you how did you find out about the channel? I don't deliberately remember. I know <laughs> you that answer. Um, That's okay. That's cool. I believe, I believe through recommended on YouTube, and slash or Google search. Interesting. Which is. I, I think that's pretty good news for your organic reach. That is. Either I just stumbled upon it. I'm glad I'm glad YouTube recommended me. Shouts to YouTube. I know I give you a lot of shit in my videos and rightfully so. But uh this time, you know, I I gotta give credit where credit's due. So shout outs to YouTube for, for uh pulling me into this, into Jesse's life, into Bad Plants' music. Very cool. Uh, please keep continuing to do that because I'm trying to be the next big, you know, internet YouTuber, interviewer, music guy. Uh, so let me let's let's let me make that dream happen for me. But also, like I said, go check out Bad Plans. Go check out Jesse, uh, genuine dude who makes some really great music. So um, hope to be following some more stuff. Uh, hope to hear some more stuff. You know, coming out very soon. So go check him out. Uh, seriously, if you're a fan of like Star Set, um, uh, trying to think, uh, Bring Me the Horizon, Linkin Park, if you're fans of that type of style of music, uh, definitely a band to go check out uh, and give a listen to. And thanks, of course, to Jesse for coming on today, man. Oh, thank you so much, man.